Okay, in this video, we are going to look into an alarm circuit using a LoRa radio. Now, before we do that, we're going to check out this circuit. This is a 555 timer circuit, and I made a video on a 20 second hand washing timer, and I changed the time constant, the resistor and the capacitor, so it's less than 20 seconds. You can see here. So now, when the timer, 555 timer, energizes the load, the LED, and then it turns off, there is zero quiescent current. So now we could run this circuit on batteries and the batteries will last a long time. Now the switch that triggers the 555 timer has to be a zero current device like a push button switch or you could use a house alarm magnetic switches you can see them in house alarms, they're very common or a float switch that will detect water level it has a magnet and a reed switch that would work. Also a piezo switch push button switch like this here I got it hooked up, so if I activate it, you can see the LED comes on. Now the piezo switch does not need power. It makes its own power by the piezo material. Now you could also get piezo cables. It looks like a coax cable, and it contains piezo material, and you could, you could weave that through a chain link fence, and if anybody tries to climb the fence, you'll get a voltage output, and it could actually trigger your alarm. So we're going to take this little circuit here, and we're going to adapt it to a microcontroller. So these two transistors here is what turns off the circuit for, for zero quiescent current. So we'll take the circuit, we'll add it onto a microcontroller, and we'll come up with a LoRa radio alarm. Okay, here's my LoRa alarm circuit. So I have a microcontroller. Here's the two transistors that applies power to the load. Here's my push button switch that triggers the alarm. And here's my LoRa radio module, which is a 915 e-byte uh, radio module. This LED comes on when power is applied to the radio and to the microcontroller. Now when I trigger the alarm by pressing the push button, the LED will come on, so we'll get power to the radio and the microcontroller. It will wait about five seconds for everything to settle. Then it will send, send a message three times over the radio. It will say alarm triggered, and we'll actually see it and hear it. I have an RF field strength meter. We could have a look at that. And I have a radio on, we actually could hear it. So I'll trigger it. LED comes on, it's powering up the radio and the microcontroller. There's the first alarm sent. Second. Third. Now the, the LED will go out. LED is out, so now there's zero current, zero uh, uh, quiescent current, so the batteries will last a very long time. Okay, now I could also trigger my alarm using my piezo push button switch. So you could use it as an impact detector. So I'll press it, and you can see the LED comes on. It's going to go through the sequence with the three alarms being sent. Now I actually made a video on how you could actually make one of these little piezo sensors, push button switches, using a piezo speaker. Okay, I built a little charge pump circuit on my breadboard, similar to the one that's inside my vandal proof piezo switch. And I got myself a piezo speaker you can see here, you get them online, they're very inexpensive. And I mounted it on top of a rubber washer out of a garden hose. And I just scotch taped it down to my bench. So now when I press on the piezo speaker, I could toggle the load. Because the open collector of my charge pump circuitry is fed into my Arduino Nano, the same way I did with the vandal proof switch. So basically I'm simulating my vandal proof switch. Now to increase the range of our LoRa alarm, we could bounce the signal through a LoRa repeater, or we could go to a different type of radio, like this one here. This is a 2 watt data radio, it works on UHF. There's a power connector and your data input. There's your antenna connector. There's other similar radios like this. You can get 5 watt versions made by Maxon and Ritron and Motorola makes one. Now in order to use these type of radios with this type of circuit, we'd have to change this transistor out for a high-powered P-channel MOSFET which could drive those high-powered radios. So we can still use the circuit, we just have to change this transistor for a P-channel MOSFET. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. Now when this circuit is off, there's no current flowing because this PNP transistor is off. It's a high side switch. So here's our lower radio module, here's our nano, and our two transistors which control the power, and here's our push button, and that's our trigger. Now normally there's no current flowing. Now to turn it on, we momentarily press the push button. 
Now we'll get current flowing from 9 volts through the emitter base junction to this resistor, 5.6K, and then to ground. So this small current flowing from the emitter base will give a large current flowing through the emitter collector into VIN of the nano, which will turn on the nano, and the 5 volts from the nano will turn on the lower radio module. Now the first instruction the nano is going to run is turn on D13, it's going to go high, which is going to turn on this MOSFET, and the drain will go to ground. So now the, the drain is pulling this to ground, which is keeping this transistor on, we could release the push button. So it's kind of a feedback loop, it's a latch. So now the, the FET is keeping the transistor on, so everything's powered on. So now the nano could send the alarm, the TX data, into the RX of the lower module. It'll send the alarm three times. Then it will turn off the power by D13 going low, which is shut off the FET, which will shut off the PNP transistor. So that's basically how it works. Now if you want to get more power to a larger load, we just, we just replace this transistor with a P-channel MOSFET. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano, and it's very simple. The name of the main program is called Alarm. So now when the push button is pressed momentarily, it powers up the Nano, and the first instruction will be pin 13 configured as an output, and then pin 13 goes high. Now as soon as pin 13 goes high, it turns on the MOSFET. Now the microcontroller has control over the power, and the push button can be released. So then it waits for five seconds, Let's the lower module power up and settle. Then it sends alarm triggered text through the lower module. Then it waits four seconds and it does that two more times. And then it drives thir pin 13 low, which turns off the power to the circuit. And we go into the zero current, quiescent current mode. So in between here and here, you can make it as complicated as you want, complex as you want. You write your own code. And then after that, you just go pin 13 low and that will turn off the circuit for zero quiescent current. Okay, normally power is available, so you won't need a circuit like this, but sometimes you find yourself in the middle of nowhere and you want to monitor a slide fence, either for mud, for rocks, or for snow, to protect a highway or a railway, or you want to monitor the water level of a river for flooding, then you could use a circuit like this. Now, I've made this circuit very simple, so you could add upon it. You can make it as complex as you want to suit your needs.